H Sleep, which calls itself the world's first sleep fitness company, is on a mission to transform your bed into an AI-powered device for sleep optimization and health prevention. The company announcing today it's raised $100 million in new funding backed by notable sports figures such as uh, Ferrari F1 driver Charles uh, Leclerc and uh, McLaren's F1 CEO Zach Brown, among other names. Uh, the capital is going to help uh, the company expand into the medical sector and international markets like China also getting involved, I believe, with all sorts of AI yes. involved in all of this. So we got to get into this. Uh, Matteo is here. Uh, he is uh, Matteo uh, Franchetti. I always mispronounce your last name. I apologize. H. Don't Sleeps, a co-founder and CEO. Um, and we were talking about how Mark Zuckerberg has one of these things. I think Elon Musk does. I've had one since the pandemic. I think I bought yeah, found you, you were one of the I think first. I found you on Instagram. Yeah. And I, I, I don't have an affiliate link. I get nothing for this, but I feel like I sell more of these beds than anything else. Um, it is like a life-changing, crazy situation. So for those who don't know, let's just explain. Your bed actually changes temperature uh, during the night based on your own uh, temperature and sleep uh, Biometrics. Uh, yeah. Sleep metrics. Yeah, we invented a technology that you can install on top of any bed and mattress, and it will improve your sleep by up to 30%. And we do it in a couple of different ways. We change your body temperature in real time based on your biometrics. Each side of the bed can have a different temperature. And if you snore, we can elevate right. your head, and you will stop snoring. So I don't have that feature. I always tell people this did save my marriage because. Uh, my wife and I are different temperatures. Oh, Most hip. people are different temperatures. Oh, my okay. wife runs her side like it is a freezer over yeah. there. I mean, oh, an really? absolute freezer. Wow. I like a little bit of, uh, of warmth. If you, TMI, if you ever wake up sweating in the middle of the night, never again. Never. Really? Right? Yeah. That's part of, the, part yeah. of the situation. We actually launched this feature uh, that is called hot flash mode. And so <laughs> if you have hot flashes in the middle of the night, particularly for women during menopause, but uh, you, you can just tap the side of the bed and it will start cooling you down. And uh, now women in menopause or anyone with hot flashes, even people going through chemo, now they can use right. this feature. Okay, so explain this though, because the next sort of stage of all this is you're going like medical grade on some of this. Yeah. What does that mean? So there are two major areas. One is medical grade. So we are uh, filing for FDA for a couple of different features, particularly in sleep apnea, which is connected to snoring, and potentially also for menopause, for okay. hot flashes. And so we want to get uh, um, FDA approval to diagnose sleep apnea and also to mitigate sleep apnea with some of the new products we're working on. What are those? Can you tell us about them? Uh, it will be connected to the current product. So through elevation and posture, uh, okay. we can fix sleep apnea without you wearing a CPAP machine. Uh, it will be mainly designed for uh, light and mild sleep apnea. And then you said there was a second piece of this. Um, the second piece is AI. And so we are doubling down on AI, and we are working on two new products, which will be obviously software. One is what we call a sleep agent. Mm -hmm. And so the sleep agent will be able to simulate your night before you even go to sleep. And it will start optimizing all our products and all the, the whole environment around what will happen during the night. And it will keep adjusting it while you're How asleep. How will it know what's going to happen during the night? Well, first, based on uh, your history, so all the data we have from the past. Right. Plus, we are connected to Apple Health and any other source of data you will share with us. And so you will be able uh, to um, simulate what is going to happen before you even go to bed. Do you worry at all? So my wife and I talk about this a lot, whether there's too much data. And there's some times where I do this thing, and it's not good. I'm so excited to see the data that I think like I should actually go back to sleep for maybe like an extra half hour on a Saturday morning, but I kind of want to know what happened. And I should just know because I should feel what I know. But instead, I actually want to look at, at the data, which I shouldn't do. do you, <laughs> so no, there's some people who say that the data unto itself can stress you out, which means that you'd even get less so, sleep. You, you yeah. also get your brain in you know, those. Well, blue light and all the things. Looking yes. at it wake, wakes you up. You right. can't, I never look in the middle of the night. I, I, my, it goes off, and I feel like I should look, but I'm... It, yeah. I think the key difference here is if we were just reporting data, uh, I would understand your point. But the way we use data is to do things for you in the background. That is the key difference between us and the wearables. Because the wearables, they just tell you, okay, last night you didn't sleep you mean great. The, the, I so, wear an O ring too. I, by the way, I compare the data. Yeah. yeah. So do you have data that's fed back to you about everything that's happening in someone's bed at any moment? Um... In an aggregated, anonymized way, we have data about how people sleep. 
Um, what they do in their beds. What's that? Oh, what see, she's in going into a very no. dark no. place. Uh, well, we, you can get the vibrations we, from somebody no. snoring. I'm guessing you can pick up other vibrations. No, the, the, the focus of our algos is just on the, on the key metrics that we report, and then is where we follow just the industry standards. Yeah. But going back to the data, there is another thing we are working on in, in AI, which we call the longevity twin. And so substantially what we are creating is thousands of digital twins for each eight sleepy users that they simulate your health outcomes 10 and 20 years down the line. Okay. And they come back to you with recommendations about what to do and what not to do to make sure that you will live a longer and healthier life. Okay, here's the big question. This is a relatively expensive product. Back when I first got it, I think it might have been even you got in early. $1,500. Uh, it was $2,000. $2,000, okay. It's now basically, I believe, $4,000, maybe with it all the... It starts around 3000 But with all of the stuff, you can get up there, yeah. right? Okay. But yeah. it's a better mattress than it used to be, right? It has yeah. got it. It's improved. It's improved yeah. from the original features, one I had. Yes. Right? We didn't have snoring originally. So my question to you, though, is how big a market do you think there is for this product? And is there a way, ultimately, to get the price down? Is it, would you want to have much bigger volume at a lower price point, or do you think of this as sort of a luxury product? What long term, what does this look like? Yeah, it's a great question. I really think in terms of a portfolio strategy, if we were Tesla, this is our Model S. Uh, and so you should expect over time, we'll come out with the Model X uh, right. uh, and uh, then the Model 3. Okay. But at the same time, it will also be the Roadster. And so you should expect the new products, they go down with price and also they go up.